Home Assistant's August release 2025.8 is landing today with improved group controls, more responsive voice, generate data with LLMs, and improved time triggers for automations. First up though, we have some big new AI and LLM features appearing in Home Assistant in this release, starting with AI suggestions. So what this feature does is essentially allow AI to auto-suggest and also auto-fill things for you inside of Home Assistant. Whenever you see the little star symbol, you can click on that and get an AI suggestion. Now to get this to show up, you need to head over to Settings, System and General, and you will see this new option, which lets you set a default AI agent to use. And if you don't see anything here, then you will need to add an AI integration first, like OpenAI, Gemini, Claude, or Olama. For this release, this feature is limited to showing up in just two places. The first one is when you create an automation and you add some stuff to it, and then you hit the save button and the AI icon will be here. And if you hit that, it's going to generate a name and a description summarizing what the automation you created is about. It's also gonna show up in the scripts, save dialog two in the exact same place. Now, this is quite a limited use case and not all that useful at the moment, but of course, like many new features that get added to Home Assistant, it looks like this is kind of a trial run on something just small to get feedback and improve things before it gets added to other areas. I would imagine that eventually we will be able to create automations with it entirely, which will probably make some of you happy and some others of you groan but it is a cool new addition that adds some much requested AI to Home Assistant that we are seeing in basically every other product now. Now, do remember that AI can and will definitely get things wrong. Not so big of a deal here for just the name and the description, but when it gets added to more things in the future, just make sure to be on your guard with that. Next, another AI feature is that it's even easier to generate data with LLMs using what's called AI tasks inside of Home Assistant. And this is a new action that can be used in automations and also in services to basically submit data to your LLMs. And it even allows you to structure the response of that data so that you can then work with it in your automations in a more predictable way. One of the things you could do with this is to, for example, ask AI if there are any packages on your front doorstep by sending it your doorbell feed every couple of minutes and then use the response to send a notification. Or you could also get it to analyze electricity bill, PDFs, uh, track the output, send notifications, that type of thing, all with this new generate data action. This action basically just makes it easy to interact with LLMs outside of chat or voice and kind of brings it more into being able to use that data in automations and scripts. Speaking of voice, actually, a new feature in this release and actually last release is streaming of LLM responses. As you may know, if you ask an LLM a longer or a larger question using voice, then you would have noticed that in the past it would think for a very long time, somewhere, sometimes upwards of 10 or 20 seconds before responding, which made it kind of jarring. Now, you could type the same question into the chat box and you would see the response stream through to you word by word, instead of waiting for the entire thing and then just dumping it onto your screen. And now that feature is in this release so that voice responses will now stream down word by word as the LLM is responding rather than waiting for the whole thing. Basically allowing the response to start coming through much quicker when using an LLM. This new feature is available on Home Assistant Cloud and apparently local support was added last month, which I didn't know and I didn't see in the release notes, but did want to mention that. So this is a really big new feature in making voice feel more natural when you are using an LLM. Okay, Nabi, what's the fastest way to get from Edinburgh to London? to get from Edinburgh to London is to take a direct flight, which takes about one hour, and 
20 minutes. Next, a new feature in the UI that I really like is that you can now control individual members of groups in your dashboard much easier. So if you have a light, for example, on your dashboard that is using a group or it is a group, if you bring up the more info dialogue, you'll see that now down at the bottom, you can now change the controls of individual lights too. This is a small, but I think really helpful addition. And I actually love this one. Finally, for the big stuff over in the automation editor, if you use a time trigger to start your automations, you can now specify specific dates of the week you want to trigger to run on alongside the time, which is again, an awesome new addition. As for the little things this month, the real link integration gets improvements that add Wi-Fi signal strength for cameras and pre and post recording time controls. The image integration now supports uploading files directly to it. You can now reorder members within a group with a drag and drop. And finally, there has been a number of neat improvements to the template integration to support even more functionality. In terms of new integrations this month, we see four new integrations, including Open Router or Open Router for you Americans, which is a new AI integration that can be used with the features that we talked about a few minutes ago. And there's also an uptime integration, which is great. And the Volvo integration for those of you who want to monitor your cars. We also see one integration move from the UI over into YAML. Nope. YAML over into the UI, which is the data dog integration. Imagine they just reverse UNOed it and did the other way around. As for making changes or backwards incompatible changes, we have a small to medium size list this month. Most of them are all of the same thing, which is for media player integrations, where there is a slight change in entity states that may require needing to update any automations that use the off state, but all very minor. Do just make sure to have a read for yourself as always before updating. And that's about it for this release, a smaller release this month, but it definitely lays the foundations for more powerful features using the new AI suggestions in the future. Though I can see how some people are gonna love this feature and some people will definitely not when they have to try and help people fix auto-generated automations that don't work. So be interesting to see what the feedback is like on that one. And remember, if you don't like a new feature, then you definitely don't have to use it and you can just keep doing what you are doing. Nothing wrong with that at all. Do let me know your favorite new feature down in the comments below. Drop this video a like while you're down there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.